guys, it's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. What are we going to discuss today? One topic that everyone's been interested in for a while and have suggested and that is the F scale and the EF scale. So we decided let's have one video on both of them and mm -hmm. discuss what each one is and the difference between the two of them. So let's get into some questions about the F scale and the EF scale. What is the F scale and how did it develop? What is the EF scale and how is it different than the F scale? What events led to switching to the EF scale? And what about storms that had an F scale rating? Are they reclassified using the EF scale? All of this coming up, but first, Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. So there are many sources out there on the internet about the F scale and its origin. We found a couple of good sources. Mm -hmm. One is from our Storm Prediction Center here in the U.S., part of the National Weather Service, as well as a paper that was written in the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society back in May of 2013, and it was titled, Tornado Intensity Estimation, Past, Present, and Future. So for the sake of time, we're just gonna keep this at a higher level. We're not gonna get too far into the details because there is a lot that you can go through. There's a lot of resources out there. Again, we're gonna have these linked below, and there's some more searching that you can do online to get even more information. But for the sake of time, we're gonna keep keep it at a high level, so let's get started. What is the F scale and how did it develop? The Fujita scale identifies damage caused by a tornado and relates the damage to the fastest quarter mile wind at the height of a damaged structure. Although Dr. Ted Fujita was doing lots of research on tornadoes starting in the 1950s, it was in February of 1971 Dr. Fujita first introduced the Fujita scale in the SMRP research paper number 91 titled Proposed Characterization of Tornadoes and Hurricanes by Area and Intensity. In the paper, Dr. Fujita describes the intention of the F scale in that its purpose is to categorize each tornado by intensity and area. The scale was divided into six categories. F0, gale force, F1, weak, F2, strong, F3, severe, F4, devastating, and F5, incredible. The goals of his research regarding the scale were to A, categorize each tornado by its intensity and area, and B, estimate a wind speed associated with the damage caused by the tornado. So Dr. Fujita was one of the pioneers of tornado research, severe weather, and the damage that they caused. Mm -hmm. So he was looking at it and was partnering with a few other folks at the University of Chicago, I believe, to kind of put the two together, tornado damage, structure, strength, and the construction of those structures. And it was really, really interesting to see some of the things he came, yeah. came to and started writing about. What I found interesting was Dr. Fujita's F scale was trying to smoothly associate tornadic winds scale with the, and I'm, I might butcher this, but it's, <laughs> I've heard it both ways, either the Beaufort scale or the Beaufort scale, and as well as the Mach scale. I'm just going to go with Beaufort. I'm sorry. Beaufort it is. We're going Beaufort. <laughs> so the Beaufort scale was developed in 1805 by Sir Francis Beaufort of the UK Royal Navy. Dr. Fujita explains explicitly that F-scale winds are estimated from structural and or tree damage. The estimated wind speed applies to the height of the apparent damage above the ground. And we also mentioned Mach speed. Mach speed in that scale is basically just the speed of sound through the atmosphere. So right now we're gonna pop up an image of what that F scale, Buford scale, and Mach scale looks like when it's mm -hmm. all on one graph. And you can kind of see the association of three scales right there. So as we're looking at this image, you might notice that Mach 1 is the equivalent of an F-12 tornado. So all those movies where they're like, oh my gosh, we have an F-6 or an F-10 or an F-12 tornado. So the, the tornado must be going like 800, 900 miles per hour. <laughs> this credits Hollywood even more. <laughs> Maybe they misinterpreted the scale. Maybe that was confusing. But you know, there you have it. There's the association of the F scale and its origination with the Buford and the Mach scale. Now, although Dr. Fujita has been doing tornado research since the 50s, and he came out with his paper in 1971. It was the super outbreak of 1974 and we just did 
That's a case study on it? that recently. We did. That was actually <laughs> last video. That will be linked below as well. So the value of this F scale actually became apparent during that super outbreak of 1974. And they actually used the F scale to rate each one of the 140 plus tornadoes that occurred that day. And also his F scale was actually used looking at tornadoes back to as early as 1950 based on the structural damage and tree damage he kind of was able to put an F scale rating to each one of those tornadoes that occurred. A great example of this is the Tri-State Tornado, which we also just did a case study on. But that was back in 1925, so obviously the F scale, now that we're talking about it in the 50s and the 70s, was not a thing back in 1925, but we were able to go back and look at the damage photos that were taken in 1925 and give an F5 rating to the Tri-State Tornado. Over the years, as they've been applying the F scale to a number of these tornadoes, they found some weaknesses associated with it. Some of these weaknesses were... It is subjective based solely on the damage caused by a tornado. It doesn't recognize the difference in construction. It's difficult to apply with no damage indicators. For example, if a three-quarter mile wide tornado doesn't hit any structures, what F-scale rating should be assigned to it? It's subject to bias. It's based on the worst damage, even if it's only one building or house. And it has a tendency to overestimate wind speeds greater than F-3 ratings. The F-scale has also had some misuses over the years, such as too much reliance on the estimated wind speeds, oversimplification of the damage descriptions, judge the F scale by the appearance of the tornado cloud, and not recognizing weak structures such as mobile homes and modified homes. Because of some of the weaknesses of the original F scale, in 1992, Dr. Fujita published his memoirs in a book called Mystery of Severe Storms, and he basically made some minor tweaks and adjustments to bring the original F scale up to the F scale that we knew in the 90s and early 2000s. But in the late 1990s, we had a couple tornadoes that you've probably heard of that challenged the Fujita scale, and that was the 1997 Gerald, Texas tornado and the 1999 Moore, Oklahoma tornado. And what those two storms did was it brought to the forefront the problem of overestimating winds using the F scale for tornadoes that were rated F3 or higher. Something needed to be done. <laughs> So as meteorologists and emergency management personnel and responders were responding to the Moore, Oklahoma tornado back in 1999, they were making comments about, you know, a lot of these homes were rated for 100 mile an hour winds, but some of these are just clean gone. What if the winds were 200 miles an hour? We know a lot of structures get blown away at 200 miles an hour. Do we need 300 mile an hour winds in order for the whole house to be gone? when we know at lower wind speed, they can be gone as well. So they started having a conversation to say, we need to revisit this. And though the F scale was good for its inception and application to a degree, especially for stronger tornadoes, we need to take a look at this again. And that's where they convened in the early 2000s. And they came up with some pretty interesting things to tie in the original F scale and come up with a new scale called the EF scale or the enhanced Fujita scale. When the committee met to develop the Enhanced Fujita Scale, one point was made very clear. It must continue to support and maintain the original tornado database. In other words, there must be some conformity to that of the F scale that is listed in the database. Other ideas were agreed to, including consistent assessment of damage, enhanced description of damage with examples and photos, include not only structures, but also vegetation, base damage assignment on more than one structure if available, develop a PC-based expert system, develop training materials, data collection, maintain current tornado database. Surveys should include additional data, such as mean and maximum damage path width, basis for damage assignment, latitude longitude of where the path began and ended, number of hours spent on the damage survey, and names of the survey team members. So, when we're trying to assign an EF rating using the EF scale, we actually now use 28 indicators of damage instead of the four or five categories that we talked about with the F scale. So for the EF scale, we break it down into everything from trees to the specific types of buildings like mobile homes, high-rises, well-built houses, 
brick houses, everything under the sun so you can tell when you're looking at damage photos, okay, it might take more to demolish an entire school than it would a mobile home. So that's why we break it up into 28 different types of damage indicators. Now, the EF scale, again, is still based on wind speed estimates, not wind speed measurements. So we're kind of estimating, okay, if this well-built home is destroyed, then it has to be within this wind speed estimate area, but it's not the actual, okay, this tornado was 200 miles an hour. It's like, okay, it could be 170 to 210, somewhere in between there. Now there's also something called the degree of damage. What is that about? That's right. So let's take an example of a house. You have to determine, is it a poorly built house? Is it a well-built house? That would be the damage indicator, one of those 28. But then they go a little bit deeper to identify, well, let's take a look at the degree of damage. Things like, is the roof blown off? is the whole house swept off its foundation. So additional levels of information to be able to get an accurate estimation of the wind speed. Let's take a look at an example. A tornado moves through a neighborhood knocking down the walls of area homes. Here, the damage indicator would be a number two, one or two family residences. The typical construction for this fits being a brick veneer siding home. The degree of damage would be most walls collapsed in bottom floor. Thus, the estimated winds would be 127 to 178 miles per hour, with the expected wind speed of 152 miles an hour. Now, taking this number to the EF scale, the damage would be rated EF3, with winds between 136 to 165 miles per hour. So there's an example of how they go ahead and assess the damage with a tornado that has moved through an area using those damage indicators and the degree of damage. So that's how they tie in the F scale to the EF scale. So that way it's pretty close operationally and then you don't have to go back and do all the rework for all the tornadoes before 2007. And the EF scale actually came out in 2007 officially. So we've been using that ever since. So let's go back to our example. So if you've got a neighborhood full of homes that are stick-built homes, but some are brick and not all of them are stick-built, or some are poorly constructed because they're, you know, maybe they're older and newer ones were, mm -hmm. were built stronger, or <laughs> some could argue older <laughs> homes are stronger and, and the newer ones are weaker. The indicators give more flexibility to the assessors to be able to assign the specific damage to each particular home and to be able to assess it properly. Whereas the Fujita scale, it would look at maybe kind of broad brushing it and, and then having one F scale rating for the tornado. So it wasn't giving the full picture. It was giving a good picture, but maybe not quite the fullest picture. So their enhancement is an improvement. And again, you know what? Who knows? 20 years from now, we'll probably have the enhanced, enhanced Fujita scale. A <laughs> hundred years from now, we just have the EF scale. <laughs> there are the differences between the original F scale and the EF scale. Now that we have the EF scale though, do we go back to tornadoes rated with the F scale and up update them to an EF rating? Uh, as of now, no, they are not. They're keeping the original F scale rating and that's why that was one of the requirements in creating the EF scale was that it has to be married with the F scale in terms of the damage and the wind rating. So there was no reason to go back and reassess those because again, with the damage indicators and the degree of damage, they were able to tie it together nicely. And this is why, for example, our last case study, the 1974 super outbreak, all of the tornadoes that we talked about in that were F-rated tornadoes. Whereas when we talked about the 2011 super outbreak, everything was EF-rated. As you can see from everything that we've talked about today, rating tornadoes is not the easiest thing on the face of the planet to do, and still we don't have an exact measurement of this tornado was 152 miles an hour, this tornado was 130 miles an hour. It's based off of damage, not actual wind speed, and we get the wind speed from an estimated range based on that damage. So it is actually more accurate to say 
that the EF and F scales are damage scales, not wind speed scales. And technology is improving, mm -hmm. and our storm chasers are getting more savvy and more experienced, so someday we will have more opportunities to measure whether it be mobile radar, whether it be special instruments that are deployed in the field. Mm -hmm. Someday we're going to actually be able to measure those tornadoes directly. We did have, you know, Tim Samaras had deployed one of his um, devices, probes. the turtle probe. I think it actually got hit or was right on the edge and it mm -hmm. measured a hundred millibar drop. That's a huge wind speed increase. So again, the technology's there, the people are there. It's only a matter of time before we actually get a tornado that intercepts a wind measuring device that can withstand the winds yeah. and uh, we can get more accurate measurements of some of these tornadoes. Yeah, and another thing, especially with these tornadoes being videoed so much nowadays, we have tracking software where they can see pieces of debris going around tornadoes and based on the frame rate and everything, get a better estimate of what the winds are. So as tornadoes are being measured more, they're hitting more weather instruments, there's more people taking videos of them, eventually we might have that EEF scale where it's an actual wind speed scale instead of a damage one. That's right, and we can't forget our friends at Storm Chasers, Reed Timmer and all of them, that they use a TIV and, and they're able to, in weaker tornadoes, park that vehicle and plant it in the ground yeah. and take measurements. And they have all sorts of devices. It just seems like every year they're coming out with uh, better things sure. uh, to take measurements. So again, all of that is part of the science community just coming together and trying to understand more about how these tornadoes form and how they interact on the ground with the lower atmosphere and how they produce all this damage. There you have it, the differences between the F scale and the EF scale. Again, if you like what you saw, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. Follow us over on Instagram and Facebook, as well as checking out our website and all the links for everything that we talked about today, link down below. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. Your voice cracked. Do it again. It is. <laughs> that's going in. That's, that's at the end. That's at the end. That's the end. There we go. <laughs>